Hi, sixth graders. We're starting chapter nine. So start a new page or a new spot in your notebook where you can put all your chapter nine notes. We're on lesson nine one, which is simple events. And the learning target is being able to find the probability of simple events. So probability, I would write this word down at the top of your page. Probability is... Let's highlight this right here. So the probability of an event is the number of favorable outcomes out of or over the number of possible outcomes. So probability, this is your definition. Outcome, which you might want to write underneath or somewhere or you could draw a little arrow like I did is the prob or the possible events of an action. So if we are rolling a dice, our outcomes of rolling a dice would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. A simple event is one outcome or a collection of outcomes. So an example of a simple event of rolling a dice would be rolling a 1. And then Another side little note over here, outcomes occur at random if each outcome occurs by chance. So for example, rolling a dice or flipping a coin all have random outcomes because it's just kind of whatever it lands on. So get all this written down nice and neat in your notebook. When we talk about probability, we want to write the answer as a fraction in simplest form. Or, sometimes, we can convert it as a percent. So, we need to remember that we write it in simplest form as a fraction or a percent. So, if we are going to roll a dice, or sometimes called a number cube in your textbook, the probability of rolling an odd number, well, the number of favorable outcomes, so that means how many outcomes we have that could be odd, which on a dice would be 1, 3, and 5. So that means we have three possible outcomes that could happen of getting an odd number, and then the total number of outcomes would be 6 because we could roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then we have to write it in simplest form. So 3 6 is the same as 1 half. So the probability of rolling an odd number is 1 half. If we wrote that as a percent, we know that 1 half equals 0 0.5, which equals 50%. The probability of rolling a 5 or a 6. Well, our number of favorable outcomes or possible outcomes that could make this true is getting a 5 or a 6. So there, that's two outcomes. And then there's still six possible outcomes because we're still talking about rolling that dice. So 2 6, if we simplify it then, is 1 third. And we know that 1 third is the same as point three repeating, which then is approximately 33.3%. So you have a 33.3% chance of rolling a five or a six, or one third. Probability of rolling a prime number. Well, we have to think about what prime numbers are included on a dice. 1 is not a prime number, 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, and 5 is a prime number. So 3 favorable outcomes, total number of outcomes again is 6, simplify that to 1 half, and then we also get 50%. Okay, the New York Philharmonic brass instrument players. Here's a list of all of the number of players. So the probability of picking a player that is a trumpet player, we look at trumpet 
and there's three trumpet players, and then we write it over the total number of players. So 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 3 is 13, plus 1 is 14. And we cannot simplify, simplify that anymore. So 3 fourteenths would be our fraction in simplest form. And then if we take 3 and divide it by 14, we get 0 0.21. One four, which is twenty one point four percent. The probability of picking someone that's a horn or a tuba player. So horn is six, tuba is one. So there's seven possible players that we could pick. And then again, we still have the 14 players in the whole um, band. And then 7 fourteenths, we know is the same as 1 half, which is also the same as 50%. The probability of, of picking a brass player, well, they are all brass players. So then that means that we could get Pick four, or we have 14 favorable outcomes out of 14 total outcomes. 14 out of 14 is 1, and if we make that into a percent, it's 100%. So we have a 100% chance of picking a brass player. And then probability of picking a flute player, there is no flute players in here, so that would be 0 out of 14 or just obviously zero. And then if we look at the spinner, the probability of spinning an odd number would be one or three. So we have two options or two favorable outcomes out of four total outcomes, which equals one half. And we know that that's 50%. The probability of rolling it or spinning an even would be the same because now we have two and four, so two fourths, also one half. And the probability of spinning a two, there's only one two on the board, so one out of four because there's four total outcomes. One fourth, and we know that that equals 25%. So when we're talking about probability, the probability that an event will happen can be anywhere from 0 to 1, including 0 and 1. So this is something that you want to write down. Maybe that probabilities are always between 0 and 1. If you look here, a 0% chance means that it is impossible. It can not and will not happen, just like picking a flute player when there's no flute players. That's a 0% chance. And then if we look on to the other side, a 100% chance means that it will for sure happen. It is going to happen. So a lot of times we hear about percentages and chances of something happening on the weather when we're watching the news. And they'll say, um, like, there's a 50% chance of snow or a 75% chance of snow. So when we're talking or when we're thinking of percents like that, the closer it is to 100%, the more likely it is going to happen. And then vice versa, the closer to zero, the less likely that it's going to happen. Ramon's teacher uses a spinner similar to the one shown at the right to determine the order in which each group will make their presentation. Use the spinner to find each probability right as a fraction in simplest form. So this time we're finding the probability that he does not pick group 4. So if he's not going to pick group 4, then that means he can pick 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. So we have 5 favorable outcomes out of 6. So our probability that he's not going to pick group 4 is 5, 6. The probability of not picking group 1 or group 3. This time we have two groups taken out of the mix. 
So that means he can pick 2, 4, 5, or 6. So 4, 6, which is the same oops, as 2 thirds. We know that that equals about approximately 67%. 5, 6, we know is, oops, um, five, five, six. If we take five divided by six, we get zero point eight, and then three repeating. So we're just going to round it to eighty-three percent. So complementary events is when the sum of the probabilities is one or one hundred percent. So this is something that you want to write down in your notebook as well. So the probability of not picking group 4, if we look at that one, the complementary event to, to not picking group 4 would be picking group 4. So then we would write it like this, the probability of picking 4 and then the probability of not, I'm just going to write not 4. So the probability of picking 4 would be 1 6th, and then the probability of not picking 4 would be 5 6 is what we just figured out before. 5 6 plus 1 6 equals 1. 1 6, if we do 1 divided by 6, we get approximately 0 0.16 repeating, so we're going to round up to 17%. 17 plus 83 equals 100. The probability of not group 1 or 3, the complementary event to that then, would be the probability of picking 2, 4, 5, and 6. Nope, that's the probability of not picking group 1 or group 3, so that's the probability of that. And then the probability, oops, would be, the sorry, the complementary event to that would be picking 1 and 3. So this is not picking group 1 and 3, which we just found out, which is 2 thirds. And then the probability of picking 1 or 3 is going to be 2 6, which equals 1 third. And then we know that 2 thirds plus 1 third equals 1. And 67% plus 33%, which 1 third equals, equals 100%. So I want you to pause me and do both of these problems in your notebook really quickly and then come back and check. So if each of the letters in the alphabet are in a bag, what is the probability of drawing one of the letters in the word math? Well, we have four letters, four favorable outcomes for math. So our probability would be four. And then each of the letters in the alphabet, so four out of 26, we can divide both our numerator and denominator by two, so we end up with two. Thirteenths as a fraction, and then two divided by thirteen equals zero point one five. I'm just going to round to the hundredth, and then to convert it to a percent, we move the decimal over two, so we get fifteen percent. At a convenience store, there is a twenty-five percent chance a customer enters the store within one minute of closing time. What is the complementary event and find its probability? So the complementary event then would be um, someone not entering the store within one minute of closing time. So then that would be a 75% chance that someone does not walk in. So I'm just going to write does not which is more closer to 100% than 0%, so we know that there's more of a chance that someone does not come in 
than if they did come in. All right, so you need to log into Naiku and um, take the 9-1 Naiku quiz. Remember that you need to bring your math notebook to class tomorrow and to be ready to go with your notes and um, your any questions that you have from the video. Have a super evening.